It is December 31st of 1946, and a teenager named Pearl Lusk has an X-ray camera disguised as a Christmas present aimed squarely at a notorious jewel thief known as Olga Rocco. All morning long, Pearl has been tailing Olga through the New York subway system, and now, at just about 10 a.m. in Times Square Station, she finally has a clean angle of sight on the thief. So, Pearl, she lines up her x-ray camera, she takes a deep breath, she puts her finger on the trigger, and click, she takes the picture. Now, before I tell you what happened when Pearl took that picture, I wanna do three things. First, I wanna tell you what led up to Pearl taking that picture. Second, I wanna tell you what happened as a result of Pearl taking that picture. And lastly, I wanna stop lying to you. So, our story really starts in the early days of December 1946 when 19-year-old Pearl Lusk happened to uh, strike up a conversation in a subway car with a mysterious and rather handsome man. That man was Alan LaRue, an insurance investigator and private detective that kind of saw an opportunity in Pearl Lusk. You see, Alan was currently on the trail of a big-time jewel thief, Olga Rocco who was thought to be in possession of a whole pile of stolen gems. Alan's investigation had been going well for a while, but recently he had run into a bit of a problem. It seemed like Olga had started to recognize him. He couldn't get too close to her anymore without her noticing. And now, while talking to Pearl, Alan kind of realized that he might have a solution to his problem sitting right there in front of him. Maybe he could hire this unassuming looking teenage girl to follow Olga around for him to act in his place. So he floated the idea to Pearl and she about jumped out of her seat. She was so excited. She could not say yes fast enough because you know, Pearl Lusk spent basically every single night reading detective mystery novels. And now she basically had the opportunity to be in one herself. How could she ever say no? And so Alan took Pearl under his wing. He told her to follow Olga all around the city and he had her practice taking stealthy pictures of strangers out on the street. And after a couple weeks, he finally decided that she was ready for a real job. You see, a while ago, Alan had figured out that Olga was actually carrying most of the stolen gems on her person, specifically in like a big belt that she wore under her clothes. So. He thought the, the only way to prove that Olga had the jewels would be to send Pearl after her with a disguised X-ray camera. That way, Pearl could snap a pic undetected, they could go get the film developed, and boom, there you go. Rock solid proof that Olga Rocco is walking around with stolen property. Of course, Pearl loved the idea. And so before she knew it, there she was on New Year's Eve with an X-ray camera dressed up to look like an ordinary Christmas package. She's following Olga around the subway system. She's lining up a clear shot when she can. And now we're back to where we started at the top of the video. And that is what led up to Olga taking that X-ray picture. That is the before. So now let's do the after, let's skip ahead. Let me tell you what happened to each of our three main characters in the immediate days following the taking of that picture. So first, let's start with Olga Rocco, the jewel thief. Olga actually spent the next several days after the picture was taken in the hospital. And then she had her leg amputated. And then she stayed in the hospital for another couple of months. And then she sued the city of New York for $200,000. Second is Pearl Lusk, the teenager. Pearl spent the days after the picture was taken in police custody before eventually being released with no charges filed against her. And then later, she testified as a witness in Olga's case against the city of New York. And finally, Alan LaRue, the private investigator. Alan was shot to death in the middle of the woods in the Catskill Mountains after being surrounded by 50 police officers who had been chasing him in a massive manhunt over the last week and a half since that picture was taken. Here's a drawing that one of the newspapers published of the event. Alan was actually found hiding away in a sleeping bag under a tree about a mile away from any roads. And that's what happened to our three central figures after the picture was taken. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but 
I think it might after I stop lying to you. Because I've been lying to you a lot, basically this whole video. Or I guess more specifically, Alan LaRue has been lying to you. Because I didn't make up any of what I've been telling you on my own. All I've been doing is repeating the exact lies that Alan LaRue told Pearl Lusk back when they first met on that subway car. Like, uh, just to start, Olga Rocco is not some notorious jewel thief. Never has been, never been in trouble with the law at all, as far as I can tell. What she actually is, is a receptionist at a hat company. And Alan LaRue is not a private investigator. He actually really doesn't have a job at all. He's a small time car thief that spent the past few years in and out of jail. And what's more, his name isn't even actually Alan LaRue. His real name is Alphonse Rocco. And he is the ex-husband of Olga Rocco. Yeah, here's Olga and Alphonse together, back before Olga filed for divorce just six months into their marriage. And let me tell you, once you read what Olga had to go through during those six months, it is easy to see why she left. Alphonse would just disappear for days on end with no explanation. He would fly into these crazy rages, accusing Olga of cheating on him. And he even attacked her on numerous occasions, threw her all around the apartment. So of course, Olga wanted to get away from him. But still, somehow, things only got worse for poor Olga after the divorce. Alphonse just would not leave her alone. He would call her constantly and threaten her over the phone. He, he kidnapped her for three days once. He, he even allegedly shot her in the leg through the window of her house. Truly, Alphonse put Olga through hell. Constantly, Olga lived under threat. So with that background, it is no wonder that Olga took great solace in learning that her ex-husband had been killed in that mountain shootout. Now I can finally get a good night's rest, she said when she finally heard the news. And you know, despite her terrible circumstance, it, it certainly seemed like Olga tried to keep her chin up too. Like here she is leaving the hospital with a smile on her face, telling reporters that her number one priority now was to go and find a good prosthetic leg. <laughs> and also, to try and learn how to dance again. But okay, now I think it's finally time to tell you what happened when Pearl took that picture with the disguised x-ray camera. Although by now, I'm sure a few of you might've guessed what the twist is here. So we're back in Times Square Station. It's New Year's Eve on 1946. Pearl Lusk has the camera up and ready. It's pointed at Olga Rocco. She squeezes the trigger and boom! The x-ray camera was actually just a sawed off shotgun tied to a cheese box and covered in wrapping paper. Pearl had just pulled the trigger on a gun and shot Olga in the leg. At first, uh, Pearl didn't even understand what had happened. The, the immediate statement that she gave to the cops was that she was just taking Olga's picture and somebody else walked by and shot her. Later, Pearl would be quoted as saying, how could I have been so stupid? Olga, on the other hand, instantly knew what was really going on. Even with her ex-husband nowhere in sight, even while still actively bleeding, she had the wherewithal to yell out that he had finally got her. She knew right away that even though Pearl had pulled the trigger, Alphonse had been the one to shoot her. After all, Alphonse had called Olga just a few days before the shooting and told her that she better start praying. This whole thing was just Alphonse's elaborate ruse to murder his ex-wife. What a real piece of work that guy was, huh? And uh, it, it was actually because of threats like that phone call that Olga filed that $200,000 lawsuit against the city. Apparently, she had been begging the police for a long, long time to watch over her and protect her from Alphonse. And from her perspective, they had failed to do so. She argued that the NYC police had let Alphonse hurt her, that she had lost her leg because they weren't doing their jobs. Unfortunately for Olga though, she did eventually lose this lawsuit several years after the initial shooting. 
partially because the judge ruled that the police actually had no responsibility to protect Olga, and partially because the cops said that they were actually guarding her all along just without her knowing that they were there. According to them, they were secretly watching out for her. Undoubtedly, it is the plight of poor Olga that makes this story a tragedy despite the ridiculous circumstance surrounding it. So please, if you remember anything from this video, remember the strength of Olga Raka. Or actually, <laughs> remember the strength of Olga Trapani. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.